Hold on. I gotta get my phone. Man. I gotta get my phone. Man. Oh, they late. It's like council. They ain't never on time. What's up, boy? Okay. I see this shit. Yeah, man. Huh?
10 years, um, there was a census that's been funded. Um, and based on that census, the local uh, governments had to enact district boundaries. So, for example, um, 2010 census, those numbers were reported globally. By 2011, the council has adopted a resolution that sets those four boundaries. And then before the elections for the council would fall, would follow that, those census changes. So the council, per the charter of 1976, every four years, and that falls on five years, and this current council was elected in 2021, and it was based on the census numbers that were provided in um, 10, because, now this is where it gets confusing. So 2010, those census numbers were sent to the city. In 2011, the council adopted a resolution to effectuate uh, those four boundaries, and elections were held based on those four boundaries. In 2020, there were a couple of uh, complications that confused me. The main one being the census data was sent late because of COVID. So due to COVID, a lot of the census figures, the uh, information was taken away and was sent to communities late. And because of that, Locally, the council adopted this resolution after the 2020 election cycle. In addition to that, um, emergency manager had asked for a charter review commission and they were effectuated and appointed. And in that commission, they made changes to the charter that said that council elections would be held. Two years, and that would be effective as of 2026. And that charter went into effect in 2018. So when the 2020 census figures came late, the election 2021 was held, and it was based on the figures from the previous census. So the current council was elected under what we're calling what we call the old board. And then once that census information came, Locally, they had the responsibility to enact those changes by a certain time. And so the council was asked to approve a resolution. They had to do it by a certain date. They did it once the figures were received. They did it in April of 2022. And what should have happened, but didn't happen, is somehow that resolution that was adopted should have said that these changes shall take effect in 2026 because we already had this current council election, but that's not what was adopted. So when those changes were made in that council resolution was done, it's the same thing. Those changes have to be sent to the state government. They're, they're put into effect. So those changes were done in 2022. So it's confusing not only for the residents, it's confusing for this council because at that time they were told, these are new boards. We've got new boards now, these are your new boards. Yes, ma'am. Can you speak up, please? They okay. have a hard time hearing. Okay. So um, those, this current council, yes, they were told in 2022 that they had new boundaries. And some of those members, you know, took that to heart and started, you know, addressing the residents under the new board boundaries. And okay, so this would not have been an issue except for now we have vacancies in the office of city council. So you can see in the history where um, the census information is received, the election commission meets, um, they may change their hearings based on these um, figures from the census. They make those board changes, the, the local government, the council has to adopt a resolution. And it's all done in a timeline so that this has never been an issue because the boards would have been adopted before the next election was held. But for 2020, we don't have that same situation. It's 
a lot of those alleged commissioners were held remotely, and it just wasn't the same process. And again, it, it happened after the election was already taken place. So when we came with our first vacancy into office under this current council term, yes, sir. Because we have to follow the recall law. The recall law says very specifically that it's based on the districts where those individuals were elected. So because the council was elected under the old boards in 2021, the recall and the vacancies have to be filled based on those districts that they were uh, elected under in the first place, which is 2021. So, like I said, it really was a concern before because the timeline would always fall in place. And an easy solution would have been to say, you know, because you know, the charter hadn't changed. It was always every four years or five years. So in hindsight, we say, well, we should have done a resolution that says be effective, but nobody was really thinking about it. I, don't know. Well, I won't say that no one was thinking about it. I'll just say that it didn't happen uh, legally in that document. So when those boards were done, you know, we have to send it to the state. We have to they're effectuated. They're put into place. They're put in the automatic. What about when they create new boards because the council adopted the resolution? Because they had adopted the resolution that we got these numbers from the census. But again, if, if the resolution had just said to become effective 2026, then this would be a new point. But it didn't say that. So in 2022, the voter card was now based on the changes that were made based on the census. But then, in 2023, we have vacancies that are held. And so now the law says, well, you gotta look at the recall process. And the recall process is very specific. And it says in Michigan election law that you go by the district of which they were elected, which means we have to use the boards that were in effect in 2021. So what's gonna be confusing is for um, a resident, a voter, to know you know, I'm qualified to, to vote at this new call because I used to live in that board then. Or no, because I lived in the board that used to be, you know, so it's very confusing. So, but, so but the recalls are, are based on the districts where the person was elected. So, um, so that's why, even though the, the resolution was adopted and it was enacted and it was effectuated, when it comes to recall, we still have to follow the recall law. And so that's where we are now. Um, the vacancies, the first one came in July of 2023 with the resignation of the seventh Moultrie council person at that time. And that, um, because of the amount of time left in the term, this count, current council's term is 2021 through 2026 because of those changes to the charter. Those changes said that the mayor that was elected at that time would have a three-year term and the council had a five-year term. And the mayors, so that they both end in 2026 with the idea being that as of 2026, the mayor will vote and the council elections will be the same time. Um, and again, this only became an issue when we had a vacancy in the office. So when that vacancy occurred, and there was more time, uh, more than eight months left in the term, uh, the council had to appoint someone to take that uh, position and then schedule a special election. And the seven board one was 
done a little later this week with Ned, but it is, uh, it was scheduled for May and August, but again, we only had two candidates who qualified, so that meant we would need to die by the time of primary. And the second instance was the recall for the night portal that went through. And so that meant that there was a vacancy um, coming up in the night board. The night board current council person has decided not to run. So the brief is on the ballot um, for this May election. Um, current council person is not one of them. And since that time, we've also had another vacancy occur with the uh, enforcement passing uh, the first board council person, Mr. Mays. And so that has created another vacancy in the office, which this um, election has been set for an August primary with the November general for the first board. Um, but again, the, the concern comes from election law, which says that we have to do this based on when those members were elected. And they were elected under the wars that were in place since 2010, or I want to say 2011, because that's when that resolution was adopted to set the board boundaries from the 2010 census. So when this council was elected in 2021, the 2010 census boundaries were still in effect. So that's why we have this issue. So um, that's a little bit of the background, but it's going to be an issue because they do still have um, just over two years left on their term. And so any recalls that come up, any other vacancies, we're going to have the same issue that has to do with old and new boundaries. So when the other thing that's come up, so we have people that are doing recall petitions as well as trying to run for office and they need to know who can sign their petition and things like that. And so it's very confusing, but it's basically going to be based on the address that the person lives at. If that address is part of the old board boundaries, then the person will qualify. If that voter lives in the house now, as part of the old board boundaries, and they qualify to um, sign a petition, to vote, and to recall the election. Um, so, because of this duality, in some instances, this, the, the qualified votes filed are based on those board boundaries that we have. And it just gives us. I just have a question. Um, it just does sound, sound confusing. Um, how the menu was shown by or the voters. Are those voters that were in the old board are that can vote, are they being notified or something to try to explain that to them to, to let them know that they do get to vote in this? No, not necessarily. They, they would have to reach out, sort of. Okay. So if you were to call the office or look up the information, it's going to be You gotta talk, get the microphone. Please talk up. Please talk up. Can you speak up? Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. Can you speak up? <laughs> Sorry. Anyone? No, I'm, I'm talking to Sabina. For this, for this particular election, so keep in mind, City of Flint, we did not have a 2023 election. So in 2022 was our first year to implement the permanent application list. So then, the, if we had the option for our voters to be on the permanent ballot list in the November of 22, since we had no election occur in 23, this 
February, this past February election was our first to implement off the permanent ballot box. We had a few because we didn't have too many people to actually apply for it. So when May came along, we did issue out over a thousand applications for those individuals that reside in what I consider the old district board pertaining, you know, off of. So we sent out over a thousand permanent ABs along with over 500 ballots that for the individuals that were on our permanent list that were eligible to retrieve those. So as far as our new voter cards we mailed out pertaining to a new decrease of precincts, would have also let you know that your precinct may have changed if you pay attention. A lot of our voters mail those cards back to us, like they were supposed to sign and mail it back. Then we had to return, we had to mail it back, and we would have posted to send those cards to the <coughs> So we've had a lot of voters call in and just kind of determine where they do and where they don't. Um, it's hard to give you an old precinct number uh, from the five precincts that are in the ninth ward. They were 57 through 61, I believe. So now with, with the split, three of the old precincts of the Freeman and Nethercut and so forth, most of the voters remain the same or where they were. There were a few precincts that would have been split in half and now half of is eight and half of it's the new ninth. So we did not mail any letters to individuals. Since we were on our permanent AB list and our permanent ballot, the voters that were eligible to, to have the ballot be mailed and the voters that were eligible to have the permanent application were mailed. So individuals that would have turned in their permanent ballot list from the February that were eligible for this old board were automatically mailed their ballot out. But everybody that would come to polls to vote doesn't, they're not notified. No, 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 no. we haven't mailed out notification to each individual from the old to the new, no. Well, I that should be done? Well, I, I'd love to be on that. that. I don't know yeah, if it's... Yeah, how do we let the vote get done? Well, it, it does mean all the voters in this list. Right. Just, okay, so, yes. so I get it, yeah. But still, there's probably a significant amount of people that that Well, there's, that there's five precincts, and I want to... Don't quote me on this, but I want to, I, I mean, for each precinct, um, I can't even recall how many voters it is for the five. But I, I can generate that, but it's a few thousand. And like I said, we had the thousand applications, over a thousand from the AB applications go out to ask if you wanted to mail it. And then we had over 500 actual ballots that were mailed out to the permanent ballot residents. So when we mail those out, I don't know, like I said, I want to quote, I can go downstairs and give you the actual numbers for five precincts, but out of the five precincts, one of the precincts is very minimal. It's been split by water and, and so forth, and I think it's less than 100 voters in that one. So out of the other four, I mean, we're, I mean, I, I don't want to quote my numbers, but it's, it's, you know, there's approximately, I think, between six and 8,000 in each ward. Do you have the, uh, the automated okay. system? Um, that the city has, so when there's an emergency or it's information is gathered, it's like a robo automatic phone system or anything that the city has. It could, yeah. That it could because it is really them. important that we know who our council person is and that we can participate in voting from that council person. Oh, well, most definitely. I mean, they're like Davina was indicating. If anybody has any type of a question or anything, you can give us a call. Excuse me. I'm finishing. Okay. I mean, they you know, as far as the pull your information up because I you know where you currently stand at the moment yeah. and then we have a local district um, street guys that we just look up and like we say it's for the address. You know some of the street addresses have been split. You have an odd and even. Both of them were one board now the odd is the new board and the even stand and the same. The only thing is if they didn't if they were not aware that there's an election coming up they wouldn't even know to call you or ask them is there an election coming up. They just don't know. That's why if they're notified they could be but I don't know that you know get that to be that as far as the laws and restrictions of what is to be notified as far as the Okay, so my question is I, I heard what I think your name is Gloria, yes. what you said. But you are disenfranchising several residents. I don't care if it's one that may not know. 
that one needs to know. And, and As a man, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. I don't, you don't have to speak as far as the rules and the laws and regulations of what we would have to Gloria, let me finish so, so I can keep my thought. I'm going to ask a question, then I'll have you answer, please. But I really would like Davina to answer. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay, so as the manager, you manage this. Now we have this big communication problem. What are you going to do to fix the communication problem? In the short term, meaning right now, because you have an election less than a week, and in the long term, for the, the later ones. We need a corrective action now, something that can be communicated to every home. I'm not saying voter, every home. Every home needs to know where they need to vote at. And the other thing is you have a Flint portal that is supposed to tell you where you reside, what war. That information, if I'm correct, is doing the future. You need to send a postcard out to every home. And you need to put on there, if you want to verify, go to this portal, and that information needs to be correct for today. You know we're going to have multiple recalls. So get everything today as it should be, not what it is in 2026. You managed it. You have to fix it. How are you going to fix it? May election. Right now, it's really going to be a matter of press releases, not, or just letting people know. It's difficult to succinctly put into what, I, what we've just been describing here. But what we can encourage people to do is call the office, um, check. But you sent something out in a communication. So how are you cor going to correct the communication that was sent out? So you sent out voter registration cards okay. twice yes. right. from the clerk's office with the wrong wards. Yes. The wards that weren't supposed to go into effect until 2026. Okay. So they're not the wrong wards, but they are in effect. The council did adopt that. That is in effect. That's, that's done. So and I thought so. The effect. people that stay, for instance, on El Dorado Drive that were previously in the sixth ward, you're now saying that they are second ward. in the second ward, and that is correct? I'm saying that that resolution that was adopted by council in 2022, setting those ward boundaries, those are the ward boundaries. That's based on the redistricting, that's based on the census. That, those are the boundaries that elections are held. But because of these recalls, we have to follow the recall law. So how do you correct that? So for the people, we can't really do it for the. We can't send out, you know, um, here's your card for the recall. Here's your card for everything else. And this, this only counts. For Why can't you? Or does it say you can't? Because they can't, just they're a flyer, then. A, flyer, a, a flyer, then. A postcard. You're a certified. To everybody and say this is simply for you and you as a person. It's easier to just say, like you said, just call us and we'll tell you. I can't send you the information to say. Everybody so doesn't know to call you, Davina. But, but everybody but, don't but, even know who. The communication that says um, this is your ward and everything else, and you're reading that, you just as easily read to say this is where you need to go to find that out. I don't want to send something out to have it be wrong and have it individualized. To the but you're okay with them being wrong with the yeah. information you sent? No, I, so I'm saying, what I'm saying is I don't want to send wrong information. You already did. No, it's correct information. So, so that, that is what it is based on that resolution that was not those are the board boundaries. Regardless, what we should have done is said it's in effect 20, but it's not because we didn't say that. We'll send it out again so, and so, then put effect so, so here's the problem, right? And that goes to the question that I asked earlier. On one hand, the state, Speak you can't, on one hand, you can't supersede the state law. That's, that's on one hand. On the other hand, you're implementing the Flint law down the road, the district. So the confusing part is that one of the laws has to go so that you can implement. You're trying to implement one law in another law. And, and that's wrong doing that because it's confusing the voter. Because here, here's my question, right? Say, like I'm, my, my ward changed. I got two voter co cards, say first one. Now, one, I go vote if, if uh, 
But they are Lord, the green car. I'm in an old second. So now I have to go to a precinct on election day to vote on the deal. Then you got me in the first ward for voting for Congress and all the rest of the thing. Now I gotta go across town from this precinct, from the old second ward, to another precinct, to the first ward. Why don't I have to do that? I wouldn't have to do that. Yes, you would. If, it's a, if, if, if my old ward is precinct two, and my new ward is precinct one, yes. I would have to go to old precinct to vote for the old the old uh, council person, and facts. then go vote for the congress person. Facts. Facts. That's facts. Um, so based on your experience as a voter from you got your card, because the card we got recently were based on precinct changes, because we did also precinct changes. Right, and so ward changes. Your location and your precinct changes. But the ward, the board ward boundaries are still the same. Okay, so but where's the old nothing. ward? If, if, if I have a new precinct, okay, so I got a new precinct. You go to that, that card and you go to your precinct, and you're there for whatever the First day ward. election. If you're, if you're not qualified, it's the, if you're, you're but what I'm saying, it's going to go, it's going to be like the primary election. All right, let's let's. You're not going to have to go to two precincts. The ballots don't follow you as you So if you show up at the precinct, it's going to go. You qualify for this. So, so, this for this so when they go into the, what is it, QBC? QBC. QBC, QBC, right? And it says first war. When we go to that table and fill everything out, you telling me that if I'm in the second ward, because I, I, I did it before where I went to the wrong precinct and they say, you're not, you, you don't vote at this precinct. They don't even know what, what precinct I'm supposed to go to because I have to call down here and ask you what precinct I have to go to. So if my voter, my new voter registration card says first precinct, uh, first precinct for first ward, the new district, I'm over at, uh, what is that, Faith Temple on Flinder Road for first ward. Now the old second ward precinct, say it's over at, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, St. Lucas, to vote for Liddell Lucas. I would have to go to second ward, so how would they know that I can, I can vote for second and first? How would, they, how would that person know to give me the recall for, for if I'm at the first ward, it won't even, matter of fact, if it's in the first ward, it won't even have a deal on there because it'd be in the second war of that. Right. How y'all gonna fix that? <laughs> They're confusing people. So this particular upcoming election, the May, it's only gonna be focused on the night, but when we come to the August, and like we say, we have the seven, when you go to your, and I'm gonna use myself as a prime example of a Flint resident, okay? I, you still live in the old eight, and now I'm in the new six. <laughs> okay. If, and I'm just gonna say if, there was the recall going on for my old eight ward council person, and I live in the new six, okay? They come to my street address, which is old eight, new six. I would be eligible to sign a recall petition for the old eight ward person. <laughs> and I'm not going to say any names, but we all know who that may be. If the recall was to go off for the eight ward, I would be eligible to sign for it all the way to the six. When my election comes, come up, when I go to vote, it'll be a split ballot. The, the qualified voter file will be programming with the Genesee County when the ballots are printed. So for yourself or, and myself, when I go in and they're gonna pull my name up, we're, we'll have two different ballot styles. We'll have one for everyone that lives here, and then there'll be mine that will be eligible. So when I get my ballot, it'll be identical with the category of the recall. My <laughs> back. A robo communication system, and it's run out of the mayor's office. Yeah, the one that he put up. He got that he used it for Easter egg hunt. Or just send a flyer. So, you know, I did not use the communication system, but I do have plans to do this. So, I would say which company, but it will be a text number. Where you can sign up and we'll send out text messages for uh, information and then um, send a question and it will 
I really try to answer your question as well. Where do I vote? Um, and where do I register? Um, how do I get a new ballot? And we will also be sending out information, just general information on that. So my new voter registration says I'm 8th Ward, which is remaining the same, but I'm eligible to vote for the 9th Ward new councilman. Mm. I don't understand why the 8th Ward gets to vote for the new 9th. I'm still 8th. I've always been 8th. I'm remaining 8th on the mm. registration card, but I checked my ballot with my, um, and it says that I'm eligible to vote. I have no idea that I'm eligible to vote for someone else that who's makes sense. counselor, and I'd be glad to do that. Nor would anyone in eighth ward know what they can do. That's true. Yeah, that's crazy. So this is this is really going to be a big problem. Who authorized for those um, registration cards to be sent out twice, right before these elections? Yes, I only have one. Carl says that anytime there's a district change, board change, precinct change, you have to mail out the voter cards twice. But why well, were, the change happened. But why was why were those cards sent out and they are not effective? But they are effective. So so you the, just said they wasn't. No, the cards are based on ago. the change of the cards that the first set of cards you would have gotten were based on the twenty twenty two redistricting and that's the war change is based on the so The cards that you recently got were based on precinct changes. So if we had money and we was able to get a lawyer, we can honestly take this to court because you can't apply the law on one hand and not apply the law on the other it's hand. The, the laws aren't the reason why I say that's the reason why I say that's right. The laws are still no, in place. It's not you can't use both laws for one thing because here's the problem. And on one hand, you're using the, the new ward for the congressman and all that, right? right. You're using it for that election. Right. And then on the other hand, you're saying, we can't use the new law for the recall. You can't use the law on one side and then not use, so the, use the law the on the other hand. The board boundaries do not, don't really affect the broader, that's for the local, the local ones. And so, this is so, the first so time what this has come up since just like the charter, just like the charter, right? When we voted, when, I mean, when the Blue Ribbon Commission changed the charter, it had to go into the AG's office so that the AG can look at it so he can make sure that it doesn't supersede any state laws or nor did it supersede or, or infringe on anybody's rights in the Michigan Constitution. This right here, the lawyer, the city attorney, they, they, they fumbled the ball because they should have told Ms. Brown that, hey, listen, the charter says that the new elections, I mean, that, that the charter says, I mean, the resolution shouldn't go into effect until 2026, but it went into effect in 2022. So now you're using the law when it's beneficial or when it works. For, for you, I'm not saying you're doing it that way, but what I'm saying is you can't you can't just say, I'm gonna break the law over here, uh, even though uh, Arm Rock would say, I'm gonna go over here and stick up this place over here, but I'm not gonna do it over here. I mean, I committed a crime over here, so yes. I still, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm still, I mean, I still broke the law. So we say the law, there's no law that's been broken. The resolution is the law. Well, it's, but it was legally adopted. It's right. unfortunate that it didn't say that, but what it said is still legally in effect. Right. That those laws have been changed. So it's superseded. So when you say recall, <laughs> when you say the recall, that it has to be the old council person. The old that's the state law. That's the state yes, law. It's been much but the city law is superseding the state the law, so you law. can't stop. You can't stop that We're law. We're talking about different things. Though. The city, the charter, which addresses recalls, it says per state law. Whatever the state law says, what our local charter says, and the state law says that you have to go by the old districts. It doesn't, it doesn't say, say that exactly. It doesn't say you have to go by the old district because they never knew. And we were coming to a situation like that. Exactly. It, says, it says that they have to vote in that district. The district under which you are elected. Right, but it 
That's the same, the old district. Well, old district, but the district under which the council people were elected. So the seventh board vacancy. So the, the vacancy was created by the person that left that was elected in 2021. So the individuals that can vote to recall or replace or anything else are those people that were in those districts in But let's just say you had an administration that may like to send out birthday cards. Why not the clerk's office send out a simple postcard saying, this is where you will vote in the ward you will vote in for the recall election? Very simple. Yeah, right. I will volunteer my time to come in and put stamps and address labels on postcards. I mean, it seems like we have a room full of people who are concerned. Maybe there's other people out there that will help volunteer the time because this is important. Is that and something that you will consider? Vote, you need to have your vote count. I, I hear what you're saying and I understand that. I'm going to encourage and welcome this because we do have two more important um, vacancy elections that we know of right now. The other issues that could come so we do want to get this right. Are you but will you, you consider? Are you going to do the mailing? Keep having Will you consider you mailing out a postcard? Consider doing anything that's reasonable and that's common sense. That's a long thing. Yeah. thing to do without being told y'all that. Well, it's not. It hasn't been black and white. It's not that easy. Can you utilize the county? Can the county help you? Like. from the office, um, is this something that you all think that should be sent out postcards to help rectify this situation as well? 
I would like people should be notified, but for me personally, my part, I do equipment and I teach the e book. I do the equipment and, um, okay, I do the equipment and teach the e book. So when a person, when you go to your precinct and vote and they say, you're not in this precinct, they should never say, you can't vote here, we're done. There's a, a way to, I don't really need my phone out loud, I'm not talking that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a, an option in the EPO book that they can go to to look you up while you're standing there in front of them and tell you where to go vote. And, and in the class, I teach that, I say, I tell them that. You, you never tell somebody, no, you can't vote here, I don't know what to do. They will always look them up. So you say you handle the equipment, will the poll um, watchers or the people that's working the polls, Will they be educated enough for this ninth ward election to identify who can and cannot vote in this recall? I'm not sure I'm training for poll watchers. Now our election workers, yes, they will be. But the poll watchers and challengers, we really don't work with them. So I can't answer for the training they got. Oh, no, Rich. Mr. Did let's just say, he didn't get to the rest During of the, the last election, people. you lived in the eighth ward, yeah. but you just moved into the Regency apartment, and you changed your voting address. Can you vote in the election on May the 9th? You already know they're ninth ward. They never changed. If you lived the last election, the last election, the last council person you voted for was in the eighth ward race. You have since then moved to the Regency, which is now the night board. That's always you change your voting address. You change your voting registration. Can you vote in this May, May the 7th election? Say so you moved? If you, now you live yeah, yeah. in the Regency's apartment in the night board, can you vote in this election? It doesn't follow the voter, it's the address. It's the household address. So, so, That's the so your house so you voted in 2021 for one of these council okay. people, and you moved to you voted for the ninth ward council person in 2021, so and now you moved to the third ward, um, and you know, you no, know you cannot vote in front of the ninth ward person. That's the basic there. common That's sense answer. Now there's another problem because I was told from the county that you could. No, wait, it doesn't follow the board. Wait, wait, wait. It's always what? on the address. The I think he's board. asking a different question. I think yes. you're asking if you live in the old 8th ward, yeah. you move to the old 9th ward, you can vote in that election. Correct? Yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. yes. If you live in the 9th yes. ward, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the reason you see the apartment is the 9th ward, no matter which. Then yes, you yes, you can. Oh, that's not even a question. Yeah. No, yeah. So, yeah. Can they, so that person can vote. Okay, and he also can sign a petition, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So again, we we are not just me. We are, and the people that are viewing, are interested in what the others in the clerk office have to say about rectifying this issue. Is this something that you do think that is attainable to get a postcard out to let the people know in the ninth ward before this election takes place? I think we, um, we started with her. I, I mean, we really want to hear from the others yeah, in the I'm office. About getting something out by that's next week. That's your yours. We would like to see what, what everybody says. What do they think? You have time. Just like when you sent the Come on, Rich. Let them ask it. Please let them ask All we can do is work on making it better for their future. So that's what we. That's what I'd like to focus on. I understand the frustrations, what could have happened, and what should have happened. But what we're trying to do is address it so that we don't have these issues. But see, here's the so, problem. We had so long, so long. there have been two or three recalls, Deanna. And this could be people who might make it back in just by default. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have so much trouble with our elections, every single election. You know how about elections or petitions? I'm talking about elections. I'm talking about elections. The way, the, way, the, way, the way that it was over there at the Board of Canvases that one year where they couldn't even count absentee ballots because they were concealed. 
people's names was up in the uh, deep, what the uh, Holy Grove books and all this, that, that could nobody find that person and all that. There's already so many problems there already. Now it's an added, this is going to seem like it's a serious problem. So, so why didn't someone say, hey, you know what? Let's, because I was over there for three calls and I asked uh, Dominique, why haven't anything went out to inform the people of where they vote and the difference? In, uh, I mean, Mayor been sending out Easter egg hunt on, on text messages. So why couldn't somebody send out this important information to the people who get ready to probably lose one of the best rights in their lives of voting? Arthur, I understand your question, but we can't text people because you might not live at that address. But if you send a postcard to the address, that would resolve the problem, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I mean, text just anything. The people won't do it, but I'm, to the address. Would. Right, I mean, just anything. Yeah. I mean, what is nothing? What should have happened? Yeah. Again, um, again, from the viewers, the same question to the rest of the clerk workers. Do you think that this is something that is attainable to get something out before the ninth ward election and are you willing to work on this? Lady in the blue jean jacket. We don't know your name. I'm sorry. I'm Jennifer and my role in the clerk's office is different as far as election wise. I don't specifically work with the mailing and stuff. I'm like the budget person as far as money wise. But I mean, in my opinion, oh, this, this is just a personal opinion. Well, absolutely. I definitely would want to know. Thank you. I Thank would, you. yes. Oh, glory. I mean, I oh, would, sir. I mean, I personally would do, I would work overtime to, or whatever, to get it done. Okay. Yes, I would. So when we had the, um, uh, we can we please the rest method. of them to ask? We had to verify some of the um, the ballots and stuff. We didn't get paid for that. Like I came in as a worker, I counted. I sat at the table. It was right after John came coming. He was there. He just got elected, and it was downstairs in a room somewhere. There was tables. Oh, there were volunteers. The recount. Yes, the recount. Yeah, the recount. Yeah, that's why can't that's not the count. Let's do but that. That's 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 get those people. Reach out to people. I mean, but, but this is something that people are very passionate about. Do. You have to try to do it. If you don't want a room full of upset voters, you've got to do what you can do to try to get this information out to people. The young lady at the end, do you think that this is something that's attainable? Are you willing to work on this? It is attainable. You think it is? Okay. Would you, would you want to do it? And you, okay, Gloria. Gloria, do you think that this is something that attain, that is attainable and you're willing to work on? Well, it's, it's not about what I would feel personally would be attainable. I mean, I've been in the clerk's office for a long time. There's certain laws, rules, and new regulations that we need to abide by. I know when we did the redistricting, a lot of our residents paid no attention to what we mailed them. It said you have been redistricted. This is your new precinct. This is your new council board. Excuse me one moment. When we decreased our precincts recently, we by law we can't mail. We went from 54 precincts to 29. We mailed out the new voter cards that says your precinct location has been changed. And don't get me wrong, I understand the frustration. I, I get the calls all the time. But I'm not into the legalities and what the county now the county handles all the recalls. The petitions, everyone, anybody or anyone that needs to file anything with recall is handled over at the county clerk's office. When they go in and they file for the wording, we don't, you know, they'll call us and contact us, let us know that someone's filed on a particular council person to let us know when the commission's going to approve the language or what it may be. We're not there to, to I was not there, nor was any of my staff to, to hear what their staff information gives out to a person that's saying they want to recall this particular person in the first, second, one through nine. They go out there and collect their signatures and come back and they may say, now that we, and don't quote me on this, <laughs> what the county said or what they didn't say, but it comes and turns around and says, well, we feel that it should be the people that voted 
in 2021 for the individual would be the only the people be eligible to recall the individual. We've now went into redistrict. We've got all these new wards, and believe me, it's been the most frustrating thing in our office. But the question is, do you think you know, that the clarification is what you're saying? Uh, if it's a male or is it a woman? Right. That's no, the question. Do you think that this is something? I think a postcard or maybe a press release or something that would yes. state the household the address. address. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. Okay. The household information. Like Art was saying, individual voter persons, like Richard was saying, whew, that would be out right. crazy. Exactly. <laughs> because I have not moved from the 21 election from the old eighth to my sixth. <laughs> so anyone that lives in my household number that's eligible to vote every election, but eligible to vote if we had a recall going on in the eighth. So I can understand. So it's about the address. That's what a lot of people are frustrated or confused about. Yeah. It's not about your individual self. If you didn't move when you voted in 21, then you would be eligible for what your old board was. So that's, but, but as far as a postcard or something to be mailed out. Here's my question. So what you just said is not about the individual, it's about the address, but at the same time, you can have a log in where you can send out Absentee ballots, not by address, but by the individual. So, but the, the individual that lives at that address. But, but you live in the address, but you sit, you mailing it to that individual. Not, I mean, you no, 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 no. So we're mailing way. it to the individual at the address so located in the address. So either way, if you did move. So either way, it's to the individual. You're not going to just mail one postcard no, 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 to that no, no. house. You're going to mail no, no, three no. postcards and just three photos in that house. You're going to mail three postcards. No, 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 I'm hearing two different things here, and I'm trying to. Put you can live in if that house I'm, and not be registered. I'm trying to put it together. <laughs> I'm trying to put it together, right? If if I signed up for absentee ballots in the old ward, but you all took it, took me out of that old ward for the new district, and I requested absentee ballots automatically, but I'm in an old ward. Will I get uh, absentee ballot in the new one? You, you, you get what I'm saying? Yes. So how does that work? Does it automatically kick me over into the new ward, or uh, like when the recall start? Will it will it give me will it give me an absentee ballot automatically for that ward, or do I have to call? An application. I understand what you're saying, but an application that when it's mailed to you. It's not asking you to vote the particulars on it. It's just asking you, do you know, requesting a ballot by mail. If, if you were, if you, when you mail your application back, okay, comes the August election, we're gonna pull it up, all right? If you are an individual in that household address that is eligible to participate in whichever recall is going on, wherever you may live, when the application comes back, we will have two different ballot styles in our office. We'll have a ballot style for an individual that is eligible for the upcoming election categories. And then, I'll use myself for an example. If there was an eighth ward recall going on in August, and I live in the new sixth, if I sent an application in for an absentee ballot and return it back, my ballot will have the information as, as the rest of the county or the city, but I will have the category of the recall on it. And the person across the street from me may not be in the old, they will not have that here. So, so, Gloria, so, I mean, this sounds, this sounds nice. Now, I want to say it's like so, a split so, mail, so, as other jurisdictions have split mail. So, so, they have a school in Monday County, with these Sports Street schools in Clayton. So, y'all automatically, because here's, here's, here's what I know, right? When we went out to get signatures, they couldn't tell us where, they couldn't tell us where the old, old line was. They couldn't tell us at first. Who, 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 you said that you said that you couldn't get it for us. No. Uh, not lines. We had address. No. Street brackets. Oh, address. And the old oh, district address. street guy. Right. Said that y'all could find it for us. All right. My my question is, on absentee ballots, when I look at it, 
say somebody's running some another ward or something else is going on, our ballot doesn't have second ward. All of, all, if, if I'm in first ward, I'm gonna have first ward council person. If I'm and I'm this in first ward now. And the way that it sounds, y'all sound, y'all make it sound like y'all gonna look for all the new first ward people, and y'all gonna put second ward on the new first ward ballot, right? No, no, no. So how you're, you, you're, you know what I'm saying, right? But what you're saying is the first ward is the new that this election coming up is not a council election. But when I get absentee ballot, my absentee ballot. But when ballot, it when it's, 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 it comes along, it will be old and new. Okay, so, so, yeah. so, so, so here, all right, I, I guess I gotta say it. Right. So, I'm totally right. If I'm in the new first ward, when my ballot comes out, it's going to have everything that pertains to the first ward. Correct? Do you mean in August? In August. Okay. In August. In August. When, when I go to vote, it's going to have uh, actual absentee ballot. It's going to have everything in the first ward. Correct? Okay. It'll have your reps, commissioners. With for that's for everyone that resides for, in that for, for first ward. Right, but the reps don't have anything to do with right, the council. But, but what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. That, right. right. This, first ward don't have anything to do with council. There's, on the new ballots, right? Uh, anything. I mean, no, but I'm listen, not, listen, check this out. I'm in the old second ward, though. Right. I'm in the old second ward. So the old second ward needs to be on my first ward ballot. Right. When you go to your vote in August, okay? When you go into your precinct location to vote in August, they're going to pull you up on a laptop. Okay, the city of Flint normally only has one ballot spot. If you resided in another jurisdiction outside of the city of Flint, we'll say like my co-worker downstairs lives in Mundy Township, they have separate school lines. Like they, they cater to, I think, like Sports Creek and maybe some other school districts. They have split ballots in other jurisdictions where they will go in and depending on what school side you live on, you would, they, they will have three different ballot styles there. So when they pull your name up, they're gonna pull up your name and they're gonna say, oh, you need to get ballot style. I'm just gonna give you some, you know, don't pull me on me. Ballot style one. That means you're qualified for ballot style one because you're gonna vote for these same issues that we all are gonna be voting on. But you live in the Sports Creek School District, but he lives in the Monday Township, so you were voting on two different school issues if there was a school issue ballot on there. So what you're, when you go vote, the program that the qualified voter will be programming along with the, the county who does the programming for the ballots, you'll go in and you'll get your ballot, okay? So I'm gonna use you, me, see, you and I live in the same area, but you're the old and I'm the whatever, new or whatever. You're gonna get your ballot, I'm gonna get my ballot. All of the, the categories will remain the same, but you are eligible to vote for this recall going on in the first. That's going to be on your ballot, not on mine. It's going to be two separate ballot styles at the so, same So you're saying that, it's where, be, where we, so what you're saying is, now when I go in there, instead of just having a number, no, 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 I didn't say a number, I said don't call me. No, 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 I'm just saying what it sounds it's a like. It's style. No, what I'm saying, what it sounds like, right, is that I'm going to have two different ballots. Not you, yeah. the it's, precinct location. Right, the precinct location. Not you, So what I'm individually. Saying, see, this is how confusing it's going to be. Listen, listen, listen. Here's right. a better, easier, Thanks, simplified sir. explanation. You know when you went and voted in February and you had to say I want Republican or Democrat? Right. Yeah, they had yeah, two stacks of ballots there. When you go, say you're in the first ward, they bring you up, they're gonna the QBF has programmed along with the county on the ballots to say, okay, this person gets this ballot that also has the first ward council. But if somebody who was not in the first ward they are going to get a ballot that's it's going to have exactly everything yours has except the first four. Right. So y'all can it. so y'all can for two two different ballots. Yes, for the first word and the second. In August will be three yes. or no two, but for yes. regular yes. nights. I don't know if that makes it easier, but no, that's that makes that's 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 easier. I mean y'all can for two different ballots. Yes. I go in and when I fill out that little yes. slip, yes. What is you had another one? Okay, yeah. my fault. Yes. Um, this meeting is about elections. We have some viewers that have questions about the, um, the recalls. 
Who, this is a two-part question, and I'm glad that the whole office is here. Who is responsible for ver verifying the recall signatures in the clerk's office, and did we ever find out what happened to the six missing sheets? So right now, I would say everyone in this, on staff is ultimately responsible for verifying, but a lot of it does fall to um, our supervisor here, Gloria, and um, some of the other staff people. What we do is we try to have at least three people check um, the signatures. So one person will go through and do the checks and make the notations, and then someone else will follow up. So we do try to have three people at least check um, for those signatures. As far as the situation with the missing pages, I have never spoken publicly about it because a lot of times um, people talk about stuff. They don't really ask questions. I can tell you. Um, the processes that were in place were lacking. So, Without really saying too much, I will just say this, that um, what we sent back when we verified, there was, the county uh, received so many pages. When they delivered them to the clerk's office, there was no process in order that says, we're gonna count these pages, there was nothing signed to say, we received this many, we sent back this many. We know how many we were working with for so many weeks and we work with those pages, we sent them back. Um, you know, I sent my letter to the county. The county received it, and apparently they sent it out, and it was the person that uh, had submitted those petitions in the first place that said, you know, I just turned in this many. And then that's when the county said, oh, well, we thought we had this many, and that's how many we took. They said they thought. Oh, right. The county said he had copies, and he right. said he was just copies. Right. right. And that's how they were able to use the six missing sheets because he had copies of it before he sent it over here. Right. Well, Somebody yeah, him. but we know what we received. All I can say is what we, what we say we received. They don't, he might have had copies there, but they, he has no proof that that's how many he brought over to us. Oh, wow. As long as he came to us, there was <laughs> then we didn't have to, there was something from us that signed to say receive this many. Hey, that happened. This is hey, the reader. Hey, you know so, I was over there at that at that Kansas meeting when Gloria wouldn't sign over there, sign off. Now, uh, so listen, I would say that's not 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 that's not
but there was no accounting on that day when they brought it over to say this is how much you brought. So they, 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 they can they can have a number and they can say what they had, but what I'm saying is they can't prove that that's how many they brought to us. And what we said, how many we turned back over, that's what yeah. we said. We so, so let me ask you, what, 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 what are you doing? Because the people in the city have serious trust issues with everything that's on the government. What are you putting in place so that our election won't be like it was? So we keep them with something as simple as that. I was, and I'm just being frank, I was under the impression that it was handled differently. So just being more involved as the clerk to say, yeah, now from now on down, I personally pick up all the, we call petitions myself, we count them together, we sign everybody's three, try to sign up, this is what oh, this is going to get into it. So even something like that, just um, the idea behind the precinct um, consolidation. When you talk about Flint, and we have all these mistakes, and we're the last one to come out of the and we have four people. So the idea is that we kind of consolidate so we can get our best workers and, um, you know, fewer numbers precinct wise um, so we can have, have a better balanced um, number of the books and numbers and figures and things to turn in. So that's what we're trying to do is. Um, make it so that we have the best workers. Um, some of the precinct locations we had issues with, we're trying to address those concerns. Um, just communications, how we do things, it's not uh, always ideal, but again, we've made mistakes. I want to work on correcting those and working with individuals to make that happen. Um, it also comes with, right now, we have some changes going on in the office. And it's going to mean um, that what the staff is responsible for is more election-centric. So um, I'm hoping to create positions that will reflect that and provide more oversight and supervision for these things to make sure that we're in compliance and we're doing things so that people can have more confidence in what's happening in the office. And I hear what people are saying. I don't want people to think we're not listening or we're not. It's just right now, this is unprecedented. We haven't had this situation where the, uh, the boundaries were adopted. We haven't had a situation where we've had 11 recalls, attempts, you know. Um, so it's just, but we want to be able to do it right, and especially in this election year, so many important elections going on. You don't want to mess up local, state, or federal in any way. So, and Davina, in trying to smooth, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. No, he, he this, and, and, oh, I'm and sorry. And trying to prove, oh, but this is about the same question. since corrected that, but again, I'm not, it's not a us versus them. I, I, right. We were able to use the copies to do what we needed to do legally, so we were able to still do that, and we don't want to be in that situation. I don't want to, you know, what say they we're going to waste the last thing we want to do. But, um, but not only the copies, weren't they all date stamped and marked? And your office was was the one that came and picked them up. The county didn't drop off anything, no, so that, that was the, the proof. The ones that you're talking about, they were dropped off to our office. That was the last time. Now, like were they date stamped? They were stamped uh, in C, order, but I don't think that a copy was made from what they just dropped them off, and then I think they just left without a copy. Because if they had a copy, see the way it would work too. Is if you're dropping off so many copies. You're going to sign a document that says I dropped off this many copies. I'm going to sign. You're going to sign. You're going to get a copy. I'll make a copy of what you brought to me. But none of that happened. It was just they dropped it off. We counted. We said this how many 
and then we started our work. But somebody had to have the copies because when you brought them back, six pages was missing, and they said, "Wait a minute, they we got these." Copies. Okay. But what they brought to us was the, the number that we had. We didn't have all those pages. But why are y'all numbers all the way They, they right. said they brought all of them to us, but they can't prove that they did. No more than we can prove that they didn't. But why y'all numbers? Signing into that effect on that day. Not to cut you off, but why y'all numbers be off? Every time when the county say what it is and when it comes to Flint, the numbers been off twice in these recalls. Because they, they also have the final say it'll be something like, um, we might question, is this in person? Did you, did you print it in? Um, you know, does it match your recall number? Does it match your voter card or your signature? Does it match your voter card? 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 I, 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 I can't sign. No, not you. 
the voter. You said, but if the voter ain't right, you said. They signed with an X, and then they're, if, 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 that we do have individuals that are no longer able to sign. Mm -hmm. Whether they, they can't write anymore, they went through a stroke, okay? okay? They but, tried to get me for fraud for that before. No, 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 no. No, no, they're either they're eligible. You know when they try to get me for fraud on me? Well, I don't know what they're trying to do for you. <laughs> or what they're trying to do against you, okay? But we have ballots that come back. And the husband and wife been together for 50 years. They feel, well, he said I can sign for him. When they sign that and it comes back, we know that's not their signature. So they get a letter in the mail that's, that's generated from the Bureau that says, we received your ballot or your request back and your signature is not your signature. They'll call back and when they're in the hospital right now, they're, not, they're unable to, to, to sign their ballot. And the mail looks were fixed with an X. Okay. The no, we don't know. No. We're, we're almost out of time no. right now. We've got just a couple minutes. But again, um, I just want to emphasize too that you can send your inquiries to um, cityclerk at cityofflint.com. Um, call the office 810 766 7414. And um, I know some of you are here a lot more than others and active, so you can reach out anytime to me directly um, to see you have questions or anything in uh, aspect of this. But again, I encourage and welcome your suggestions and we will try to do what we can. Um, the May election, I don't know how much we can do for that, but we can definitely have um, better processes in place for August and November with regard to these local elections, which is the main concern. Um, and, you know, abided by any concerns legally or anything like that. Because this is such a complicated issue, it's not always easy to just um, make it succinct and put it into little pairs of things. But we can definitely do what we can to try to direct people if we can't just put it in a postcard and at least get them where they need to go. How long have you known that there was going to be this May election? Huh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so since uh, January and the voters still weren't going to die? Um, they got another registration sure card. Like what was going to happen as far as how they we were going to handle it? Because but, we were working with the. But they got another they voter registration card. Tell me about how they were going to address this situation because this isn't something that's happening. Voter registration card should have came out. Oh, here. And that's why you know, oh, we updated oh, the uh, call by voter file. They were going to do that. He must go. Yeah. 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 So we're just kind of learning how on the whole how we're going to. Addresses. So people learn from their mistakes. This has clearly been a mistake. What have we learned to try to stop this from happening again? This this isn't okay. Right. No, because it's, it's not okay. you know it was it was it was uh, you know these factors that normally wouldn't have happened again. It was the census late information. It was the charter um, updates that changed. Ain't it May seventh? When is the election? So May 7th? We learned that, we, you know. Uh, it's May 7th. Yes. Hey, hey, so you know, and there are other communities that are in the same situation that Dr. Sarah did after the fact, and they're having the same sorts of issues. Can't you but send out a letter? Think, we already said it. Um, I mean, a letter, just a letter saying, hey, you say right. That, um, right. Yeah, just the letter. Those communities also Nothing. have Speaking. the number of vacancies that we have to deal with in these offices. So, yeah, we, but we have been waiting and following the lead of the Bureau to see how we can handle this stuff. So, um, Davina, I'm going to give you a hard time. So, when, if, if, if Candace get elected, would I be able to recall her? Right after she comes in office, since she's been there since July 23rd. And then I have to recall within a year because you can't recall the last year. So, how do we get our right to be able to recall the elected official if she's coming in with almost less than a year ago? If she's elected in July or August, um, it's 2024, she would still have. Over two years before her term. Oh. Because they're through November 2026. Right, but you so, know they say they have to be in for a year and then, you know, okay, you know so we, call, we 
recall them, but it was, you know, the first, you can't recall them the first and the last year. Davina, I know you're wrapping up. I know you're wrapping up. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, I know you're wrapping up. Um, real quick, the Genesee County Office of the Clerk, they quickly drafted up uh, what's on the ballot, who's running, how to vote, and a map of the Ninth Ward. Is this something maybe that you can piggyback on and get it out to the Ninth Ward residents before May 7th? Yeah, it's actually enough time. Uh, possibly. Um, I'd like to speak with them on, about that. But. Who has the decision making process to do that? I mean, because it seems to me, just from my eyes, the county is doing everything, but it seems like Flint is trying to turn back the hands of time for some reason, and I don't understand why we can't get this information out. Mm -hmm. When yeah. it was voter registration cards sent out twice, even after we found out it was going to be election, but nothing telling us, you know, who can't vote. Right, and the county is, like Gloria mentioned, the county is, you know, taking a lot of the lead on the recall because it's ultimately deal with the recall elections. For the most part, but um, yeah, I mean, it would be too difficult to say, you know, what they said. Um, but that's something we have to look into. Because I know you should have done the map or whatever what it is that they're. Doing. Yep, they have a map included. Who can vote? Who's running? Um, when the election is May seventh. Uh, how to complete your absentee ballot, return and apply for absentee ballot, and also when in-person voting takes place. So it's a lot of information that can sent, be sent out as quickly as a per se birthday card. Right. Perfect. Uh, yeah. I agree. This is that one time. Uh, 
what I'm saying? Uh, it's round of court for oh, uh, not having okay. enough Republicans as no. uh, election workers. Is no, that the one y'all talking about? No, our answer is no. For a reason. Reason. It's, it's not as election. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, yeah, so for this, because um, we only have what, five precincts, five precincts for the ninth ward election. So it um, should be easy to find a lot of Republicans because there's lots of us that are willing to work. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> well, we already have people scheduled. So, so are they Republicans? Republicans? Yes, I mean, per, we have, I'm not sure exactly how have to It should not be precinct. one in each precinct. If you have three Democrats, it should be three Republicans. Mm -hmm. It should be one to one unless you can't find them. Then exactly. I understand. So we have people willing to work, though. Then, you know, take my information, you can contact me and let me know specific workers that want to work this specific election because we're reaching out. You know, we're scheduling based on the sort of things we do it. Yeah, I can so, do a list. It's so the best way to do this kind of information. Email, call, what is the best way? Email. Email? Yeah. Um, send that to my direct email, uh, first semester of last name. I'll get it your That's okay. it. Yeah. I'll get it to but any, any other, if it's generic or something like that, city clerk at City of Flint, but if you send it to me directly, I'll, I'll check that as well. And I'm very serious about helping. If you need help with postcards or getting information out, we would be happy to get people to help. This is important. We want voters to know that they have this election. So if Judy can get in touch with Judy, she can get in touch with people to help. What resolution? Absolutely. Should not be an address. Drop it off there for the address. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, with that, we'll wrap this up. And I appreciate everybody coming out. We'll schedule another. You know, we can meet about what you can. This was just something that I was asked to do again, and I didn't really. It was kind of last minute. But it's something that I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to do it about maybe um, more. This is just um, something that I do. And something else I do want to encourage everybody to do is just to um, take advantage of absentee voting and early voting, which will be in effect for um, August and November. So, yeah. So we just want to make sure that everybody knows about all that. So everything that we can do get people to vote where they need to vote or how they need to vote, we want to do that. So definitely want to you know, schedule that and make that happen. So, so yeah, so thank you everybody for coming. And uh, we'll look forward to the next meeting like this. See you, family. Was more confused than I left. More confusing. Really ain't nobody coming in. Y'all know the regular people. This is something that, is the camera still on? Yeah, it's still on. So we got people outside that's, that's with the water commemoration. Right. Um, perfectly fine, whatever they're doing. I'm not knocking what anybody else is doing. But I thought that this would be a more important, a more impressive issue. Because this election is coming up May 7th. I didn't see any candidates here. No one from no candidates from the ninth ward, no candidates from the first ward, no candidates from the seventh ward. Unless they don't want people to come out and vote, unless they want people to be more confused than what they already are, why weren't the candidates here? They should be here asking these questions, not us. That's all I have to say. Peace.